Well, hi again. I guess before I call it a night, I decided to create one more video to show a little bit more about the Surface Shader for Text Mesh Pro, as well as show some of the functionality of Text Mesh Pro. So let me hit play in Unity and uh, describe what we've got here. So what we've got is a slightly modified scene over the previous one. Uh, we've got three spotlights, red, green, and blue, uh, basically that are sweeping from left to right. Uh, they're basically illuminating here this text object created by Text Mesh Pro uh, inside the scene. So uh, if you're unfamiliar with Text Mesh Pro, Text Mesh Pro is a tool, it's an add-on that we're creating for Unity uh, that will become available on the Asset Store as soon as it's completed. Uh, Text Mesh Pro was designed to be a straight replacement for Unity's built-in Text Mesh. The goal is to provide all the functionality that you find with Text Mesh, but to also provide added features and functions. The goal was also to deliver all these features and functions at an equal, if not better, performance than Unity's built-in Text Mesh. Now, Text Mesh Pro, uh, much like Text Mesh, works with standard bitmap font textures slash atlas, but the tool was also designed uh, specifically to work with a distance field uh, texture slash font atlas. Now, the advantage of a distance field uh, system is that if I zoom in, for example, to my text, you can see that as I zoom in, my text still remains super sharp and super crisp if you look at the borders. But if I zoom back out, it still looks super nice and super clean at any distance. So unlike a bitmap font where you basically have to generate different sizes of that bitmap uh, with a distance field based system, we only generate one atlas of one size and then it fits for any other size. So this particular atlas is a 512 by 512 uh, distance field texture. Uh, this is for Arial font. The other advantage with distance field is unlike a bitmap, if you wanted to add a border, uh, texture your font, and so on and so forth, you would have to go in Photoshop or whatever your favorite uh, paint program is and create and alter this font atlas. Well, in the case of a distance field system, I only need this atlas once and then I can tweak it to your heart's content. I can change the face, the border thickness, and all of that dynamically. Now, however, before I go in and show more about that, I just want to go back and describe the scene in the surface shader. Um, so when you look at what's going on right now is I'm showing a preview of the surface shader for Text Mesh Pro. Um, Text Mesh Pro will come with different shaders. Some of them are uh, to be used with normal bitmap fonts, um, vertex lit, for example, much like Text Mesh provides, where the object is lit by, you know, it's vertex lit, it doesn't cast shadows, and it's unaffected by scene lighting. Um, so both are bitmap shaders and our basic vertex lit surface uh, distance field shader will behave the same way where the, the object will live within the scene and be unaffected by lighting. But we also thought it would be pretty cool if we provided a surface shader where now your text could actually be affected by scene lighting, cast shadows on objects like you can see in the back here, the ease casting shadows and so on and so forth. And we thought, you know, that would be kind of cool. So if I pan around, you can see that the object, you know, is behind the boxes. Uh, you can see the shadows on the ground. If I move to the back of the object, you can see there's no light in the back, so it's not being light uh, or lit. Uh, if I actually turn on a light back here, oops, wrong light, uh, but you can actually see that it's being um, this annoying fast sweeping blue light is actually lighting the back of the object. Um, so we have you know, the object is clearly affected by scene lighting. Now it's being occluded by the boxes and so on and so forth. Now, although it lives in the scene, obviously it's a, you know, it's a flat plane. Um, and, and most of you will have the text, you know, flat displayed for UI and so on and so forth. But we thought, hey, it's kind of cool that it can live within a scene. Uh, let me actually move, make this object move a little bit just so we can see uh, what it looks like as it's spinning. You can see the shadows. Now you'll see the back you know, taking on or being affected by the scene lights, which is kind of neat. Let me stop that and reset its position. There you go. So now let's talk about the distance field stuff and some of the features of Text Mesh Pro.
Um, so text mesh pro was designed to obviously once you're in the editor you can make all the tweaks you want and so on and so forth but uh, we also wanted it to be dynamic where via script you can change pretty much all the different properties and settings of your text and the tool so to begin with uh, let's say we wanted to change this text so I can go in on, on the other side in the editor window um, and say I want to change my text and We'll go here and say, okay, this is an example of Text Mesh Pro. Um, so we've changed our text. Let's say the word example, uh, we support rich text. So let's say we wanted the word example to be bold. So now I changed it to bold. Uh, everything changed to bold. Now I'll say where bold ends. So now only the word example is bold. Uh, let's say we wanted it to be italic. So now it's italic and let's end or say where we end our italic. Uh, you can control, by the way, dynamically the uh, level of boldness and the slant of italic. So because again, it's a text mesh, uh, not text mesh, but it's a distance field based atlas, um, all of those things are dynamic and we can change all of them. Uh, another thing we could do is right now we have this bold italic. Uh, let's say we want an underline underneath the word shader. So we'll go add underline. So now we have underline underneath shader. You can also control um, where the underline is and move it up and down uh, for each font. Now let's say we wanted to add um, like a trademark after the exclamation point. Well, let's go to the exclamation point and that would be a superscript TM and then end the superscript. So we support superscript and subscript which is kind of nice. Now, um, if you look at our text, uh, before I show some other things, um, because we added the TM, the line wrapping or word wrapping kind of changed. Well, um, we can basically disable word wrapping. So now the text is on one big line. I can re-enable word wrapping. And then in the editor window or via script, I can basically change where that word wrapping is or occurs. So let's go back to having just text mesh pro on one single line. Um, let's see, another thing I can change is, let's say we wanted the first letter, you know, when you look at a paragraph of text, sometimes the first letter is like bigger than the other letters. Well, I can go back here and say, hey, size is equal. I can either specify a size or say, well, the size is, uh, 24 bigger than whatever the other one was and obviously right now it made the whole thing bigger but I'm saying look I just want the E to be bigger so now we have a big E and then the rest of the text is at the normal size that we've got which looks kind of cool uh, let's get rid of that so we have tab you can set tabs in there you can also specify a specific position uh, for each of the words uh, inside the string. So there's additional stuff. Um, let me go back to removing the big E and keep it normal. There you go, whoops, example. In terms of the text right now, the text is centered. So I guess we'd like to have it left justified or centered or maybe right justified or maybe flush which I call justify. There we go. Let's go back to left. Actually, go back to center. Uh, because again, it's a distance field font, I can change the size of that font at will, make it super big and still look super nice and make it super, well, kind of time moving the mouse here. So it's kind of hard to control it because it goes pretty fast, but I can make it super tiny. And you know, if you look at it, it's super tiny, it still looks super nice. Let me go back. That's a four point size. Go to 48. Um, line spacing. Well, I can adjust the line spacing. So as you uh, generate the font and TextMesh Pro comes with a tool to generate your own uh, bitmap font atlas as well as your distance field atlas. Uh, when you do that, we support kerning. So you can choose to import the kerning pairs or not. Uh, if you choose not to import them, you can actually define your own kerning pairs inside of our tool. Um, so line spacing is one of the things that comes through the TTF file. 
Um, but if you want, you can override the settings and change, for example, the line spacing. Let me go back to what the normal spacing is. Uh, character spacing, you can control the spacing between characters. Again, I'm moving the mouse so it, it goes pretty fast, but I can make it you know, super wide, super whatever. So let's go back to normal. And doo -doo -doo. let me go back here. And I hit with my mouse the word wrapping. Let's go back to where we wanted it, right here. Let's see here. Uh, obviously, you can uh, you can uh, change the anchor of the text object. You know, from top left, top top right, center, whatever, all the different angles. Uh, let me turn off um, all the funky lights so you can see the normal text. Uh, so I'll disable all the lights. So now our text has no light on it. Well, it has whatever the ambient light is. And let me turn on a white light. So now we can see the text itself and whatever colors it has. So obviously we have color attributes. So if I wanted to make the word of orange, I would go in and say orange is uh, ff 80 So now we've got orange here. Um, I can change um, I can basically overwrite all these colors, make it back to white, saying, look, ignore all the uh, color tags. I can overwrite, I guess I can say, look, I want to tint it. Now, as you can see, I'm tinting only the ones that don't have a color tag. And the assumption is, well, if you bother to define a color tag, you know, it kind of doesn't make much sense for us to tint it. So here you can tint the ones that don't have a tag. But if you hit the override, then obviously they all get tinted that way. Um, and there's another function, let me go back to white, where I can actually change the face color and that tints everything regardless of the other. So there's you know different features or modes that you can pick from. But anyway, so, so we have the colors. Uh, let's see, what else do I have here? Um, Okay, let's take a look at our text. So here what we've got, I described the advantages of distance field. So let's say we wanted to change the border thickness. Well, I can go here and dynamically change the thickness of my border. Now obviously, you know, there's a point where the text looks kind of weird, um, but let's make it like a tiny little border here. Um, now, right now with the shader, um, if I increase the size of border, you're gonna see zoom right back here. If I increase the border, um, you'll see that eventually it kind of clips out over there. The border is too big for the, the text anyway. But this is just because we're using the surface shader right now. This, both the surface shader and the normal shader, the mesh expands to basically make room for the border. Or if I go here, uh, you can see that the edge is really sharp. I can add softness to my contour. You know, to make it blend in better. So as you add more softness and more border, then the mesh expands to make sure that the letter fits with inside of it. Um, next, um, let's add a texture to the face of this uh, character. Uh, let's see, uh, let's add a nice brush metal. So you can see now we've added this brush metal texture. Looks kind of cool. Uh, let's change our border. Um, let's first change its color because right now it's black. So we can change the border color to anything we want. We'll make it white. And let's uh, give it a texture as well. So I could make it be, uh, let's see here. And I'll pick this, some wood, wood plank texture. It's a gray texture and let me make the border thicker. So you can see it's got a texture there. Uh, but let's pick a different texture because that one's kind of boring. I kind of like the cool orangey gradient texture. Let me make the border a little bit thinner. This makes for a cool looking font. Again, and this is the Arial font. And I can, I've never in any shape or form altered this distance field atlas. All I'm doing is changing these dynamic properties of the shader and our tool. So with the same 
distance field atlas, I can generate an unlimited number of permutations of looking for this different font style. Um, now, in addition to this, let's go back here. Um, let's say I wanted to add some beveling. Well, I can go back here and add beveling. So now I added beveling. So now our font looks like it has beveling. Now, obviously we're, it's still on a 2D plane, so we're kind of faking the bevel. And, and most of you, most people like me, um, you know, your text will live on your UI or somewhere or on a flat plane, and, and then the bevel looks bevel. And there's actually two bevel modes. There's an inner beveling and outer beveling, and you'll be able to pick between those two and adjust where the highlight will show up. Uh, the highlight's not working right on the surface shader, but it's there with the normal shader, the vertex slick one, but you'll be able to tweak all of that. Um, now, let's see what else I wanted to show. Okay, let's, let's switch fonts just for fun. Uh, we'll go to a thicker, fatter font, like this guy. And basically, an example of Text Mesh Pro, blah, blah, surface shaders below the ground. So we're going to change our word wrapping uh, to make it show up like this. Now, obviously, I could have, you know, moved the text around. But why do that when we can change the wrapping? So now we got this cool thing. Now I'm going to add a texture again on the face and show you some of the texture options. So we'll go back to this orange texture because it makes it easier to see what's going on. And I will uh, disable the tag or color tags for the texture. So right now the texture is being applied per character. So it's this texture is a gradient from left to right. So we've got left to right, left to right, left to right. But I can change my mapping options both horizontally and vertically. So for example, here I can say line. Let me go back to left justify. So now I'm seeing per line. So the texture goes from start to end on this line, start to end on this line, start to end on this line. But if I switch, for example, to paragraph mode, now the texture goes from the start of the paragraph to the end here. So now these are not orange anymore. So uh, you have different controls there. Same thing vertically, if I switch to like a vertical gradient, horizontal or whatever, but top to bottom, and let's go back to character. So now I can say it's per line. Now, vertically, it's a little bit more subtle. But right now, if you look at the top of the E is orange, the bottom of the E is orange. The top of the P is orange, the bottom is orange. But if I go in line mode, it spreads the orange from the tallest letter to the smallest letter. So if we had made the E like big with the size thing, the orange would be up here and orange would be there and then it would spread it like this orange would kind of go away. Hopefully you get what I'm saying. Um, if I go to paragraph mode, then basically the top is orange, bottom is orange. And if I mess with uh, line spacing, you can see that the texture, like the middle, there's a point where the orange would show up in the middle one. Yeah. So the textures goes from top to bottom. And you could actually, if you go um, paragraph mode both ways, then you could actually map an image across all the different letters, which looks kind of cool. Um, so looking through all my stuff, I think uh, that's pretty much it. I believe I talked about kerning. You can turn it on and off. Um, all these different things can be changed dynamically via script. I think that's pretty much it. So anyway, so I guess uh, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Again, what I was showing is mostly the surface shader for TextMesh Pro, but I also showed a bunch of the features of TextMesh Pro itself, which is a tool that's going to be available. It's an add-on for Unity, and it's meant to replace the built-in TextMesh. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, feel, please uh, feel free to post your comments. Uh, the goal right now is to, I mean, one of the last things to complete was the surface shader. Now that that's looking pretty close, uh, the next step is I want to post a complete video uh, on the Unity forms and a work in progress showing the user interface and how everything works to get user feedback. And uh, depending on the feedback, hopefully if all the bells and whistles and the features that people want are in there, then the plan is to finish the tool and uh, put it up on the asset store for uh, everyone to purchase. So once again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and have a good evening or a good day. Thanks. Bye-bye.